Welcome to the Big Dog Post Game Show. This afternoon, Maryland falls at Wisconsin 23 to 10. I am Wayne Viner. That's Mason Viner. Mason, the game was not that close at all, whether or no weather. Maryland just didn't really overall show up. No, it feels like the game never started. Uh, the Terps come out with really nothing and just continued throughout the game to fail to adjust, drop passes, miscues on defense, over committing to bad gap protection while running against the run. And, well, Wisconsin played Wisconsin football and Wisconsin weather, and the Terps just had nothing. I think under Coach Leonard, Wisconsin does look like Wisconsin again. Uh, but, you know, it, it, good for them. Uh, they had a, a very light crowd, and weather was horrible. It's windy. So you didn't get the whole Camp Randall experience. Jump around looked pretty cool. I think Maryland needs a tradition like that. It, it looked like a uh, looked like a Maryland basketball, uh, what do we call those? A uh, flash mob. And, yeah, yeah for once, glad that um, we didn't make it to this one. Mm -hmm. We were planning on it, but things fell through throughout the week, and... Um, mm -hmm. It would have been an ugly game to go to. It, it would have been. Would have enjoyed the experience nonetheless. Look, when you can't throw the ball, as Maryland just could not, Leah looked almost childlike today. He actually, as we talked about the game, he looked small. He wasn't particularly decisive. When the play didn't go on time, he, he didn't look like he knew what to do with the ball. When the play did go on time, he still didn't always look like he knew what to do with the ball. He looked like Josh Jackson back there, which is the last time Maryland had less than 100 yards passing in a game was that horrible Thanksgiving weekend game against Nebraska in Loxley's first year. And, you know, Josh struggled with a lot of injuries in his time at Maryland. And Leah right now, I think he's not fighting through the injury as well. He found himself parallel to the line of scrimmage a lot of times. He wasn't stepping into the throws. He wasn't driving the ball. And look... Loxley's been clear. If guys aren't 100%, they shouldn't go. Our quarterback right now looks like he's not 100%, and he probably shouldn't go. No, I thought they actually had a great moment of inspiration when our Ginger Cannon started the game, um, but he lasted one play, and, and, and that came back in. And that says it all for Maryland about the game today. The quarterback's not ready to go in the first play of the game. He's trying to get the visor off his helmet. You know what the weather's going to be prior to, and and that kind of just, it, it set the stage for what just felt like um, guys just not being prepared for the moment. Just, there, there's your, as we go to break, there you go. Just weren't ready for the moment, a chance to have almost a generational win, and Maryland was not ready today. You are watching the Big Dog post-game show, and here's a word from the Big Dog himself. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the Big Dogs. Welcome back to the post-game show. Mason, you pointed out that Maryland looked very focused, funneled to the middle of the field. It left some opportunities for Wisconsin. Yeah, Wisconsin, again, play-calling-wise, started the game off with just I-formation, power looks, and the Terps really bought that when they were able to stop it. And as the game went on, Wisconsin, not a team that just has one list or one sheet of plays out of the I-form for their running backs, started to move their point of attack around, utilize different parts of their offensive line. It's not a one-strength team, not a one-trick pony, and Maryland just continued to bite on that inside look. And, look, a couple plays, guys bounce to the outside, break it off. Maryland's defensive backs, poor tackling today. Ja'Cory Bennett on that touchdown play just never finished the play. Mm -hmm. He was just waiting for, um, not Braylon Allen, but the other back for Wisconsin, just to run out of bounds. These guys aren't going to do that. They like to take the game to you and, at times, Maryland was really ready for that, but when it was the B team, the C team guys that the Terps use against the pass a lot, they just they could not stop the run. They couldn't. Look, Maryland offensively, still with Leah being injured and not wanting to run the ball, continued to run what we call more of a, a zone read sort of quarterback option run, except Maryland never runs out of that. And that allowed Wisconsin to crash the unblocked defensive end 
into the backfield time and time again. I cannot believe they continued with that play set when there was no threat that Leah was going to run. And if you want one reason to put Billy Edwards in the game, it's to bring the run threat back so when the Wisconsin defensive end crashes towards the middle of the line, the quarterback keeps the ball and runs. It's driving me nuts. I don't know who's running this offense for real, but that that's a Harry High School thing that if you can't run the quarterback, you don't run that play at all. Well, you don't. You can't run any of those sets, um, and and that's something that Maryland tried. It caused them the interception uh, late in the third quarter, caused them multiple almost interceptions. And look, Todd brought it up on the podcast this week. We haven't seen Maryland run those slants over the middle at all. Today they tried it twice. Jarrett dropped both of them. But other than that, that play comes from that set where the quarterback can keep it. He can hand it off to the running back, that triple option RPO look. And when the quarterback never keeps it, you need all three dimensions to work together. You need your offense to flow together. And right now, the lack of a center that can snap the football consistently, a quarterback that doesn't make decisions on time in a timing-based mm -hmm. offense. And look, 11-on-11, 11 11, we're just not the uh, power team in the scenario. So we need our finesse plays to work, but didn't seem like anybody was necessarily interested in executing the little things. And next week you got a defense mm -hmm. that's just as good coming at you. So you got to figure it out, whatever you want to do, you got to focus in on those things. Well, look, losing to Wisconsin's not good. Losing to Penn state really hurts. Um, you got to be better next time. I'm getting the feeling that Maryland now has reached a level where they really can't compete with the Indiana the Purdue's, etc. But boy, you got to step it up and be able to compete with the top half of the division. Did not happen today. We'll try it again next week, and hopefully Maryland will be better on the road at Penn State. Uh, Mason, you, you want to talk about your the big move with the podcast here? Yeah, starting this week on the podcast, DraftKings has sponsored us. We have a promo code that will Release on the show this week, uh, Big Step Forward for the Young Turfs Podcast. Excited to have the DraftKings team as uh, we look for sports betting. The voters, finally, what was it been now, two years uh, since we legalized sports betting here in Maryland. The app's uh, looking to come out sometime between now and February. Hopefully by the end of the year. Rumor on the street is by the end of the year. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week as the Turfs take on Penn State.